Then just give it a few wraps around that cleat. Yeah. Within our power, we are gonna to try to capture every single fish. We won't, but we're gonna do our best. These fish are extremely fragile. They get a little too much handling. Uh, they might die. Grab this one. This is a fish that's four and five years old. It, it's not something we take lightly. There's a reason these endangered salmon are getting a ride. Fire in the hole. Historically, you go back over 100 years ago, the white salmon flowed right through here. It was a neat little canyon. And in 1913, we built Condit Dam. Constructed to help electrify a developing region, Northwestern Lake and the dam that created it are coming out. Condit Dam was completed in 1913. 12 and a half stories tall and 400 feet across, one of the largest of its era. As far as dam decommissioning, dam removals, this is one of the big ones. Glacier cold water plunging 45 miles from the river's source on the shoulders of Mount Adams is captured here, three miles above its mouth at the Columbia River. Condit diverts water from the reservoir into a mile-long wood pipeline that delivers it to a Pacific Core powerhouse. At full capacity, two turbines produce about 14 megawatts, enough to power 7,000 homes. There's just one problem. Right now, fish can make it all the way up to the big plunge pool down at the base of the dam. And oftentimes, when I'm standing up on the dam looking down, I can see them swimming around. A ladder providing fish with passage over the dam was part of the original structure. A storm destroyed it in the first year, and later, a second one also washed out. When Condit's operating license came up for renewal, agencies required construction of a passage system to reduce impacts on fish, but the cost was prohibitive. It was not a good deal for our customers. So for us, it was really a business decision to move towards decommissioning. Contractors will tunnel through Condit and drain the lake in 2011. In 2012, the dam will be demolished and its concrete used to recontour the site for planting with native species. As removal begins, the water level is lowered just 10 feet to keep the work area dry below the dam. But for lakeside residents who witness the drawdown, change already is dramatic. Northwestern Lake became White Salmon River right before our eyes. It started to make a sound, and the sound was a sound of rapids, and it was sounding like a typical river. One of the most spectacular things I've ever witnessed in my life. To empty the lake completely, contractors must drill and blast a tunnel through the base of the dam, a 90-foot thick wall of concrete built to endure the ages. We'll use probably about 3,000 pounds of explosives. You don't do a lake tap every day. These are very infrequent. This is something you can't, you can't do incorrectly because you only get one shot at it. First of all, we have to design the number of holes that are needed to be drilled, the type of explosives that go into the hole, how much of each type of explosive that goes into the hole, and then it's, it's timing. Each of 15 blasts leading to the breach is a cascade of explosions, timed precisely to create an opening 18 feet wide, 13 feet tall, sized and positioned to evacuate water and sediment quickly. It's gonna be like pulling the plug on a bathtub. All the water behind me will drain down, just like a bathtub would in about six hours. About two million cubic yards of material has collected in the mile-long reservoir. And just behind the dam, a five-story wedge of silt, much of this will also be on the move. There's no doubt that it's going to be a muddy river when this gets released. It's, it's going to have a consequence to the, the environment in the lower three miles of the river, but then it's going to be short-lived. Got a wild female. 91. Biologists have spent 60 months on a plan to protect salmon from sediment. Most of these fish are 25, 30. Uh, we moved a 45-pound fish. At the end of the day, I am absolutely exhausted. Tule Fall Chinook are also known as white salmon. These are descendants of the ancient wild creatures for which the river is named. They're big because they had to move big cobble and big gravel. 
We have moved fish this year that have tails that are the size of both of my hands. Lewis and Clark, when they came through, they would have seen these fish being harvested in the mouth of the White Salmon River. Released above Condit, they will spawn in time to produce a new generation, emerging from the gravels after a century of absence, just as the dam disappears. When the dam comes out, the habitat for Thule Fall Chinook salmon will double. Biologists expect their numbers in the river, now around 1,000 in a typical year, could also double. Coho and steelhead will increase too. Soon, the white salmon will be a different place. <laughs>